Hawks team of Tom Brenneman and Quinn Buckner. Gentlemen. All right, JP, thanks much. And hi again, everybody. In game one, a couple of teams trying to get to the NCAA tournament. You talk about UAB, Quinn, an inside-outside game. Well, you definitely talk about them. The two guys they have you really got to be concerned about is Albert Rogers and Stanley Jackson. Rogers led the league in scoring with 20 points per game. Stanley Jackson is the outside shooter at 16 points a game. He has to get it going because once he gets it going from the outside, it just opens up the inside for Rodgers. And Rodgers, as you can see by his numbers, is very good. And he did that in the season finale to Jackson with a career-high 30. You look at Memphis State, a very young team, but led by the player of the year, and he's something to watch, Anthony Hardaway. Well, he's a first-year player, but you couldn't tell it by his numbers. He's 17.6, but the most important thing are the assists. What this guy does, Tom, is he gets everybody involved in the game. He's exciting. He shoots this high jump shot, but I like his composure. He gets people in places where they need to be. I'm excited. Looking forward to seeing a great player. Is there any one thing quickly that stands out that could make the difference in this game? Well, it's going to be transition defense. One thing that I would be concerned about. If it's a close game, foul shooting, UAB has got some problems. All right. When we come back, we'll introduce tonight's starting lineups. Game one of the great Midwest Conference Tournament, UAB and Memphis State. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium in Chicago, Illinois. It's the inaugural great, great Midwest Conference Tournament. And it's time now for tonight's starting lineups. And here's the public address announcer, Jim Rebrand. And now, let's meet the lineups for tonight's first game. First, for the Blazers of UAB. At forward, 6'7", and a senior from Pascagoula, Mississippi. Number 23, Elbert Rogers. Junior from Bolivar, Tennessee. Number 31, Kelvin Allen. At center, 6'7 and a junior from Jackson, Alabama. Number 41, Willie Chapman. A correction in the forward position for UAB.
Saving money has never been more important. That's why at Piggly Wiggly, we make it easier to save. With special low pig's prices on items like all natural and tasty young and tender chicken breast, just 99 cents a pound. Adam's frozen concentrate orange juice, only 79 cents. And Mardi Gras jumbo paper towels, two for one dollar. Those nickels and dimes can add up. And you'll never sacrifice quality for the savings you'll find every day at Piggly Wiggly. Most guys kick back on the weekends. Jack, on the other hand. Good. So, how do you feel? Great rock and roll. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Tomorrow, we're sleeping in. Quinn Buckner, I'm Tom Brenneman back in Chicago. The first game in this great Midwest Conference tournament, UAB and Memphis State. And I guess a twist of irony to some degree, Quinn, the fact that, of course, Larry Finch played for Gene Bartow at Memphis State, yet he certainly shows his mentor, I guess, no easy time of it when they get together. Can't get any respect, it sounds like. I was talking to Gene Bartow a little bit about that today, and he said for 22 years he told Larry Finch, he said, I've been carrying you for 22 years. I'm letting you go tonight. <laughs> Oh, Gene Bartow in his 30th year of coaching college basketball, closing in on 600 wins all time. And Larry Finch has done a terrific job with his alma mater at Memphis State. Hardaway will tip it off against Chapman, and Hardaway and Memphis State control the tip. Well, Tom, I expect this game to be an up-and-down game as much as you can get. You'll watch both teams. They go to the glass, try to get some easy buckets that way because neither of the teams are great from the outside. Anthony Douglas took over the starting role 12 games ago. They've gone nine and three since Hardaway way off the mark. Knocked out of bounds. The Tigers will get it back. See a lot of tough man to man out here too. Uh, Gene Bartow, as I was talking to his son, is sitting right there to the left on the, the right on the screen. Murray Bartow brought the Indiana defensive scheme. Murray was an assistant uh, down with Coach Bob Knight down there. So you see a lot of tough man to man here by uh, UAB. Douglas in the lane, puts it up, cannot get the roll, and Jackson controls. Stanley Jackson, the second leading scorer for the Blazers, a man to keep an eye on. The big wide body inside, Elbert Rogers, number 23. Shot off the mark, Douglas a rebound, they're looking to run. Hardaway the long ball. Oh, <laughs> yes! That's what he can do, folks. turnout we were talking before the game well over 4,000 fans have come up from Memphis well they're, they're coming up because they know their team has a great shot at winning this tournament and Memphis State has always had a good following pressure D put on UAB just does get it across man to man by Memphis State as well Finch has been involved in Memphis State basketball going all the way back some 16 years as a player and assistant coach and then head coach. 341 wins against 146 losses in just his association with his Tiger program. That's getting it done. Oh, he, he can get it done. I, I watched him when I was a freshman. He was a senior at Michigan State in the Final Four. And I mean, he was one that you just watched the guy see jumps out with ease. Douglas nails it in for a 4 0 lead. Well, that's a nice little offensive plus when you look at UAB because they don't really expect to get a lot of points out of Douglas. And the question is, where were they going to get the additional offense to, stay, to Jackson and Rogers? Rogers can't get it. Rebound by Reginald Allen. So the Blazers on the board. Madlock, the only senior with a lot of playing time, draws a foul. Boy, this Memphis State team, Quinn, could be something for years to come. Well, they've, they've got a great nucleus in terms of young players. You see right here, he just he turns the corner, and once he turns it, you see the contact right there. But then Medlock makes sure that the official has to make a call. He goes in, and yes, he draws the contact. So periodically, you've got to do that. But you get yourself in a position where you can get fouled, make the official make a call. Sometimes it goes against you. This time it went for Medlock. Corey Jackson whistled for the foul, his first, team first, and Madlock, near 79% free throw shooter, is true on the first go. 
Many of the coaches in the great Midwest will tell you they believe that Memphis State has already won enough games to qualify for the NCAA tournament. UAB, a little bit different story. Well, it's definitely the case. But when you're talking about Memphis State, they've got quality wins. And that makes a big difference if you, when you get out and you beat tough people. And they've been able to do that. UAB hasn't done it enough. 6-2, Tigers in the lead, just better than two minutes gone by in the first half. Game one from the Great Midwest Tournament, and a region foul will go against, well, they said Douglas at first, and then it looks like it'll go against Madlock. Albert Rogers, the number one scorer, and then a couple of seniors right behind. Herb Jones of Cincinnati will get a look at him tomorrow night, along with David Booth of DePaul, although Booth has been bothered with a bum foot, bum ankle here lately. Now he's been slowed by that, but I, Joey today said he thinks that he's doing a lot better, so I expect to see him come out uh, that is booth and, and fire up his shots because he knows that the reason he's on the court is to score. 6-2 Tigers. Memphis State with a basketball. Madlock, a lot like you were in your day in Indiana, Quinn, the leader of this Tiger team, and it'll still belong to Memphis State. Well, the, he definitely is the leader, but you can see right here we got a little bit of a uh, confrontation going on and, and Anthony better understand he's a good offensive player and Allen's going to play him tight and worrying about your jaw or anything else isn't going to matter but that's all part of competition. David Vaughn the other standout in his first year for the Tigers Douglas forced it up no foul UAB the basketball. Stanley Jackson oh. goes to the hole and it's blocked <laughs> away by Hardaway. Well that looked like a good block too because he never let it get to the glass where the official would have to make a call as to whether or not it was goaltending. Just another part of Anthony Hardaway's game. You can see right here, the ball just never gets to the glass. Oh, is he something to watch. And bear in mind, he may be a sophomore, but it's only his first year of collegiate play. Turnaround jumper by Rodgers. And if he's allowed, Elwood Rodgers, if he's allowed that position on the court, he's going to score all night, and Memphis State will have a difficult time, if any, stopping him. Trailing violation against Hardaway the Hardaway turns it over. Two-point lead for Memphis State. Hardaway, as we told you at the top of the broadcast, a conference player of the year. In fact, the only player in all of Division I college basketball to rank among the top five in his perspective or respective conference in scoring, rebounding, steals, blocks, and assists. There is another block. That's where UAB has trouble. If they don't get the shots going down inside, they just don't have anybody shooting the jump shot. That's why the game is going to probably be played at an up-tempo pace. Madlock triggers the Memphis State offense. Tigers in front by two. 16-10 left to play in the first half from Chicago. Vaughn from 15. I don't think that's a shot Larry Finch wants. Not if he's turning around, but if he's standing looking at the basket, he can make that shot. Foul called against Vaughn at the other end as Willie Chapman took him to the basket. Memphis State personal number 50, David Vaughn. His first Vaughn's team first team second. second. Well, you see, Blazers, smart play is just to look Chapman. up ahead, as Corey Jackson does, and he pushes the ball up. And the official said there was contact. And Chapman's at the line for two. David Vaughn is calling the foul, too. So that's another thing that Chapman, I think, did that's positive here. If you've got Vaughn in a position to possibly commit a foul, go right at him and put him in the position that the official, again, has to make a call. Chapman connects on the free throw. Pretty good shooter from the line is Willie at 71%. And he is two out of two. Timeout on the floor. We played almost four minutes. The Tigers and Blazers even at six. It's a lot more work to make a real good living out of the farm. A lot of these guys coming off the farm, even the girls, they have a work ethic. In my generation, it was pretty much left up to the sun, but I think as much as agriculture is changing, there won't be any reason why my daughter, if she wanted it, can come in here and run this thing. Dick Clark. Memphis radio stations keep changing, but the river keeps rolling along. WRVR, the river, plays the songs you grew up with. Not the hard stuff, just the soft favorites that fit your mood today.
and they do it the way they're supposed to. So now is your chance to win $1 million. Flip the Gillette coupon in your Sunday newspaper on March the 15th, and then run. Don't you dare walk. Run to your local retail store for details to see if you've won a trip to the NCAA Final Four weekend and a chance to take the Gillette three-point challenge and win $1 million. Don't just stand there. Run right now. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. You can run like Quinn Buckner. You'll get down there in a hurry. Yeah, or in two years. Take your choice. <laughs> <laughs> UAB in the full court pressure and Hardaway gets it across but he was pushed by Chapman as he closed in near the sideline but that's the thing UAB will do too they will change defenses UAB they'll play you some full some half some 2-2-1 two, two, one, some 1-2-2 one, 1-2-1-1 two, two, one, two, one, one. they do everything defensively to try to change up on you I kind of like that strategy personally because what I think it does is it makes the young men on the court think their way through the game so they're just not on automatic change up, see how they adjust. So I think that's pretty good strategy to change defenses. Of course, you never saw a zone defense when you played your days in Indiana. I'll tell you what, we played it once, a 2-3 zone against South Carolina. We, we were playing up by 18, got our brains beat out. Is that right? <laughs> Badlock lays it in. And we know where that's been ever since. And the last time I've seen a zone in Indiana. <laughs> A two-point lead for the Tigers of Larry Fink. Corey Jackson, only a freshman, and he has started in 22 games this season. Fine player. Rogers bodying up against another big man, and Douglas slapped out of bounds, and it'll belong to Memphis State. Well, see, that's a great matchup, Douglas and, and, and Rogers, because Douglas, though he's, he's big, he still has good foot speed. Long ball to Smith at the other end. <laughs> but you can see that in that timeout, it, it seems like Larry Finch told his club, even after makes, push the ball up, and you see it's pushed up the court. You can see in the center of your screen, three UAB players don't get back. Two do. <laughs> and they let it be known, if you're going to get a shot here, you better get it up quick. That's not quite Blazers, quick enough. <laughs> no, it's not. Stanley Jackson whistled for the foul. He'll come out. And checking in for Memphis State, or rather for UAB, is number 24, George Wilkerson. Wilkerson, the defensive stopper. In fact, he has held Anthony Hardaway to eight points in the first meeting between these two teams, ten points in the second game. Well, it, they're bringing him in, as you said, because he's a stopper, but there really hadn't been much going on with Hardaway. What they're, they're seeing is that Jackson's just not getting him enough offense, so they decided to put in their best defensive team and try to create some turnovers, and that's a, a good move. If you're not getting enough offense, the best thing to do is shut the other team down cold. it off over to Jackson. Allen's got to come alive. He's a guy that can, you know, he can get a little streaky on you and make some shots. He's got to give him some offense. Trying to look down low to Chapman. Nothing there. Swing it the other way. In and out for Allen and Vaughn the rebound. Memphis State a four-point lead looking to add to it. Madlock to the hole and That's what he goes. Does. That's what he does. He's looking to penetrate. a defensive man up, little head shoulder, UAB and then he takes it. This is high off the glass. Madlock gets it to go down. Need a little help. Call this for help from Texas. Well, Corey Jackson commits his second foul, so Stanley Jackson just a quick breather, and he gets right back in. Six-point lead, the largest for the Tigers, and Madlock tries to convert the three-point play. Well, as Madlock shoots, the thing you've got to do as a point guard, you can't allow, uh, if you're not scoring, you can't allow your man to beat you, and then you get three-point plays like that. And I'm sure that's what Gene Barto is telling Corey Jackson. And a drought here for the Blazers have not scored since our first time out at the 16-minute mark. Jackson in the air, and he was lucky to find somebody. Allen for three. UAB's got big troubles now because Jackson is not getting off. Stanley Jackson isn't shooting. And, and Allen is the other guy who can stick it. And it, it, if you watch that shot, he shot it falling backwards. And, you know, this is a, an aggressive lead. you got to love it. Well, there was no way he lucked out to get that one away, I'm telling you, because Anthony was all over that one. Number 50, David Vaughn, his second to team. Pointed out a moment ago, Quinn, and 
certainly something to keep an eye on. David Vaughn has already committed his second foul. Chapman comes out for UAB. Vaughn sits down for the Tigers. And in for the first time for Memphis State is number 31, Kelvin Allen. Well, you take out a big part of, uh, of Memphis State when you get David Vaughn out of the game. And I think, actually, UAB might be in better position with Thrash in the game because he's better inside, so you get two inside players. Oh, oh boy. What work in the finish by Allen. Allen gets on the score uh, sheet here quickly. Tigers are rolling. They have built an eight-point lead. See, that shot Allen shot a moment ago. He didn't even look at the basket because he, he's just not shooting it with confidence. Their go-to guy is Rodgers, and he finds a bucket. They got to get back. See, so they're pushing it up. They got to get back. Sorry, Tom. No problem, my friend. That was the fourth point. Foul at the other end. Reginald Allen. I thought I was seeing things there for a minute. Both number 31 is the last name of Allen. Reginald for UAB and Kelvin Allen for Memphis. If you push the ball up before the defense can get back, then you got a chance to get some good things to happen. But the ball movement makes it work. And Allen gets in the game and gets a little hang on the rim, too. Memphis barely got it in under the five-second count. Six-point lead for the Tigers. will go against Kelvin Allen. Now they call him that time setting a, a, a block, really. He's a banger. He, he expects to come in and, and bangers, and Gene Bartos knows this as well as anyone. When you got a banger, he's going to come in and use up three fouls. That's why you get him in the game. Because what it really does, is it spells David Vaughn. You just use up some of your fouls. Turnovers have not played a large part in this game so far, but the way these teams play defense, it certainly could be a story by the end. Rogers short on the jumper. Stanley Jackson, and he bounces it off Madlock. You got two big bodies in the game. You got Douglas and Allen to guard the two big bodies, Rogers, Rogers and Thrash of UAB. So there's a lot of banging going on inside. 50 to play in the first half, and the Tigers a six-point lead. Oh, a near takeaway there by Billy Smith. Good draw and kick. Jackson can't finish. He's ice cold right now, but he continues to oh, good hustle. That, you know, those kind of plays get a player like Jackson back in the game, any, any good player, because they find a way to do other things. I mean, this is just some hustle here, because he actually shouldn't have any chance to do anything here and just comes up with a great effort. The activity that, that Stanley Jackson provides. As a matter of fact, when, when you think about him, if he's making a shot, he reminds you a little bit of uh, New York Knicks John Starks. You know, Starks is a guy about the same height, 6'3", 6 6'2", 6 just very active. To shoot it a little bit. Jackson has not scored yet, but he certainly has not let other facets of his game be affected. Wilkerson tried to kiss it in. No good. Hardaway the rebound. They got troubles. If he gets it, he just passes too well. What a pass. And then hammered at the other end is Madlock. Looked like Allen a hard foul. And then he goes over to make sure that Madlock didn't hit the deck. And it's a good foul. But when I was saying about Anthony, he gets the ball, and he gets that pass that heads up right now. He gets the pass, and if you look, there's one dribble into the basket. Medlock gets fouled, but that's what you want to do. You don't want the guy to have to think about anything but getting it in the basket. You see Allen does try to hold Madlock up, but it is, it's a good foul, but it's the pass that makes the play. Allen is second foul for Reginald Allen, and that is the team's sixth against UAB. Madlock two out of three from the line in the game, has four points. Madlock has played in now 122 games in his career at Memphis State. That is seventh all time. He's probably as sorry as anyone that he has to leave this kind of nucleus after the end of this season. Yeah, it's tough when you see the team this young come behind you, but it's a tribute to the program at Memphis State that they're bringing in, you know, keeping the program going. But, you know, that's the thing about college, and that's what I like about it. It's, it's that a coach has to work with the turnover every four years and, and make the composition, the chemistry work, and, and that's what makes college basketball, I think, exciting. 
Ernest Smith, number 23, has come in as well for Memphis State. Looked like contact, nothing called. Rebound and eventually out of bounds. UAB was looking for the foul, and now an overrule. It will go for the Blazers. So a timeout is called on the floor. Gene Bartow hoping to get things turned around. His team is trailing by eight. Great Midwest Conference and a use rebroadcaster of the transmission of this game without the express written consent of the Great Midwest Conference and host creative communications is prohibited. First year for this tournament, Quinn, and certainly a banner year it has been the first year of the Great Midwest. You have to believe five of the six teams are headed for postseason play, either the NCAA or the NIT. I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we were talking today. I mean, this is a conference where if you originally said Great Midwest Conference, some people say, oh, I might have heard of it. But once you start naming the names of the school in the league, they definitely light up and said, yes, I've heard of them. So to have five out of six involved, to me, is not that much of a surprise. UAB is ice cold. In fact, the Blazers only two points in the last five minutes. The, uh, as much of that, and that's the shot clock. And, and right there, that is that's Stanley Jackson, or more than likely Corey Jackson's problem. And, and Gene Bartow knows at the timeout that that thing, the, the clock, should have been talked about in the huddle. But the point guard has got to know that. But the I ball went out of bounds. Yeah, I thought they got a fresh 45 down here. The they, question, no, the question would have been of control because if, the, if, if uh, UAB keeps, doesn't get control, it's still on the 45-second clock. I mean, yes, uh, uh, if Memphis State doesn't get control, it's still on the 45-second clock for UAB, and there was no control. Right. So an eight-point lead for the Tigers in Memphis State. The 11 minutes left to play in the first half. Rodgers, bodies inside, throws it up there. No good. Tip won't go, and it'll go down this time. And going to the line is Clarence Thrash for a chance at a three-point play. Well, he's a, he's a big body. Douglas as well is a big body. But you got to get in there and fight. And Elvis Rogers is a scorer. And a scorer's mentality is, if I'm not hot, the only way I can get hot is to shoot it. And he shoots it. And you see right there, Thrash gets slapped a little bit on the right arm, gets the finish. Now maybe that puts a little bit of life in the offense of UAB. Again, just keep it live. I said, you know, offensive rebounds Rogers. is going to be, both teams will shoot it and then chase it down because neither team shoots it well from the outside. So that's one of the few options they have to get it in the basket. Douglas was whistled for the foul as Clarence Thrash completes a three-point play, and now it's a five-point spread in favor of MSU. Now all of a sudden they come out that UAB is in a 2-3 zone. This is where the wings can be really good to you, but the one shot that, that can be made is the one Nolan can get the ball back and have a very easy shot. Marcus Nolan, number 15, is checked into the ball game, replacing Madlock, the alley-oop, and a foul underneath. Hardaway trying to get to Ernest Smith back door, and he draws a foul. Smith was open before. They swung the ball to the left side of the court. Now, they, they, this is exactly what happened. They swung it to the left side of the court, and the defense just collapsed to the ball side. And when Anthony gets the ball, he just is so good at finding people. You've got to make sure you find everyone, because you know if you don't, that Hardaway will. As you see, Vaughn's coming back in the game. This is, this is a chance here, because you're putting him in the game for Douglas, putting Vaughn in the game for Douglas. That's 10 and a half minutes to go. Very easily can pick up his third, and then you've got to sit him down so he doesn't get his fourth in the first half. Now, if I'm Dean Bartow, whoever uh, is being guarded by David Vaughn, I go at him. If I'm the guard on the court, I go right at him because he's going to be tentative playing defense. Ernest Smith misses the first free throw try where he's 75% on the year. Second one won't go either. 16-11, Memphis State. Let's see who's bodying up now, or at least who Vaughn is guarding. Looks like Crash down low. Jumper outside, won't fall for Jackson. Allen the rebound. Hardaway the other way. Oh, boy, does he find people. I mean, that's an air ball that's being shot. This should be a fast break. When you don't hit the rim like that, nobody usually gets back. 
Stanley Jackson reaching foul will go against the man they call Penny, but he's been a million dollar player for these Tigers and for any Hardaway. Want to remind you our second game tonight, the other quarterfinal matchup, Kevin O'Neill and his streaking Marquette Warriors will take on St. Louis. So stay with us throughout the rest of the night. Glad to have you on this Thursday evening in March. Smith sits down for the Tigers. Couple of substitutions, in fact. It's getting a little breather. This is too big of a game. I was talking to Larry Finch today, and you know, the concern with the coaching staff can be if you think you have a legitimate shot to be in the tournament, which Memphis State does in the NCAA tournament. At this point, do your guys take this tournament to dank series? He said that that may not be a problem. If they want to go in, uh, if they get in the NCAA tournament, and it looks like they will, they want to be as fired up and as and hitting on as many cylinders as possible, so they can't afford to fall asleep. This will be interesting. You got Hardaway at the top. He can make so many things happen from right at the top. Madlock on the right wing is short. Vaughn goes to the board, but it's controlled underneath by who? It'll belong to UAB. Last touch by Allen. You can see right here, the ball gets knocked around. And then he... Oh, that's a good call by the official. That's why they got on the, the striped shirts. The rebounding is, is incredible. 16 to 9 in favor of UAB. But what they're not getting is enough offensive rebounds. They, they are not able to score from the outside. Jackson will try, and he is still off the mark. Off they go. Hardaway saved it from going out of bounds. And now he'll fire for three. And Hardaway is true to four. But you see how calm this kid is? I mean, this is this is his first full year of playing on this level, and he never gets excited. He just just plays at his nice little pace, and that's a sign of maturity out on the court when a guy keeps himself composed that way. First three points for the sophomore sensation out of Memphis, Tennessee. Crash down low, had it blocked away, and look at Jackson everywhere. You got to shoot that right now. Oh my goodness! Hardaway way up there <laughs> over the top. Smith. Oh, they left him open. <laughs> they left him open. <laughs> oh, win and out. Vaughn the rebound. And Memphis State will. No, Vaughn will go right back up and knock it in. How do you get faked that way? That's, Vaughn just faked it like he was going to the half court. And all of the defense went with him. He got a nice little shot. Yeah, you don't defend the half court, do you? No, the basket and the ball are the only two important things out there. So the Tigers, a quick 5 0 run, go up by. Closing in just under now, eight minutes to play in the first half from Chicago Stadium. I'm Tom Brenneman along with Quinn Buckner. And that's a foul will go against Smith for the Tigers. I'll tell you what, if anybody watches this game and say there's no defense being played, they're missing a big part of it because Memphis State is getting after it. Billy Smith's first, the team seventh, first, the team the seventh so that means that Stanley Jackson will go to the line for one in the bonus. Just, there's no room to move around underneath. But Memphis State has, has basically said, we're going to clog it up inside. You've got to beat us. As you see right there, Stanley Jackson go down. There's no question about the foul on Smith. Jackson is only two points have come from the line tonight where he's pretty much automatic. Three out of three from there now. Well, there was a stretch earlier this season where Stanley Jackson just could not be stopped. In fact, back in late December, early January, he was averaging about 26 points a game in route to the Great Midwest Conference Player of the Week Award. Timeout on the floor, 7.51 to play in the first half of Game 1. The Tigers lead by six. A little under eight minutes to play in the first half. Accommodations provided by Hyatt Hotels and Resorts at the Hyatt Regency Chicago win in the Windy City. Basketball fans at the Hyatt Regency Hotel located at the beginning of the Magnificent Mile. Now there's a familiar face. Legendary DePaul head coach Ray Meyer. Boy, I'm telling you, he's coached some great games and some great players. I mean, you still got people like Mark McGuire and Terry Cummings still playing on the next level. So he's, he is a legend around these parts. I won't tell you that. Four out of 20. 
two from the field for UAB. Yet the Tigers have been unable to convert at the offensive end and really start to pull away. Well, that, see, that's a little scary if I'm Larry Finch because, you know, right now you can't play better defense than have UAB shooting 18%. And they're still in the game. And the reason they are is because they've out-rebounded the, the Tigers 17 to 12. So, and some of those have been offensive, but they really have played with good effort. Now, they've moved the offense up a little bit, and I think that's one thing UAB needs to do. Move the offense up because they're getting good pressure and then get some backups to the basket. Fired up there by Wilkerson, no good. Hardaway leads a break as Smith to his left, kicks it to him, and he Whoa. will not get it to go, but draws a foul. I'm telling you, that was a very good catch because the pass, well, I thought it was too hard. And Smith was able to control it, and he still almost get it in the basket. And then you see the end of the play right, right here coming. Now, look, it comes out. Now, this pass, he's got to fire it through there because he had to get it by the defender. But you see Smith gets it up there in control, actually. And the Tigers, Billy Smith. Now goes against Corey Jackson, and that's bad news for Gene Bartow. Now they'll get Stanley Jackson, so that is his first as Smith hits the first free throw. No good on the second try, and UAB with the ball. 22-15, Memphis State. You know what Memphis State hadn't had a chance to do? Is, is, is not Memphis State, UAB. Push the ball up and get some, some what they call secondary shots. That means before the defense can set up. And that's a little bit of what we just saw there with Jackson. The offense has moved up so you can drive baseline. But before the defense can set up, push it up like Memphis State is doing. And that way you keep the defense from getting good position. UAB falls into his zone. Backward scoring clearly in the Tigers' favor. Bad locker reason why, along with Smith. May have gotten away with a walk. Pull up for the jumper. No good. Fight for the rebound. The Blazers have it trailing by five. Got a steal. <laughs> Gene Bartow wisely said, folks, we got to get a control of this one. Yeah, after the dunk, an emotional play for the Tigers. They own a seven-point lead. 6-0-4 left to play in the first half as Hardaway leads his team. Central Hotel across from Carnegie Hall on 7th Avenue. The Omni Park Central is two blocks south of beautiful Central Park, a few blocks from the theater district and minutes from Madison Square Garden. Rates begin at $99.50 per room, not per person. For reservations, call 1-800-THE-OMNI. That's 1-800-843-6664. Six oh four left to play in the first half, and Memphis State a seven-point lead. UAB with the basketball. Tigers picking up full court. Chris Haynes has checked in for the first time. Where's number 14 for the Tigers, and he is whistled immediately for the foul. Well, that's what you don't want to have. You bring guys in off the bench like Chris Haynes. You, you want him to come in, exert some pressure, lay Finch was up, because you don't want him to foul, especially in the backcourt. Just good defensive, good pressure, good containment. But because you run the risk with a guy like Jackson, who's having a, a terrible night offensively, from, from him getting getting off the snide, you see he's made four free throws, and eventually his, his confidence will come to him. They call that across the line too quick. So that will not be an official try for Stanley Jackson. Four out of four from the line, and Larry Finch unhappy with that play on his player's behalf. So Jackson, who is a 79% free throw shooter, you don't like giving him the front end of a one and one because, well, he missed it. I'm telling you, they can't, can't buy a basket, can't get the ball there. Good is just having a tough night. And he's still in the game. See, 2-1-2. Two, two. You, that's where the ball, you don't want the ball to get because you get it, you kick it out. You can see the kind of shots you can get. Haynes missed a wide open three, and UAB again. A chance to get the lead down to five, and even four with a three-point try. Rogers, great position inside. He catches it down there, but can't control it. The travel. Yep, Reginald oh, Allen walks. You know what? UAB won't take little shots. Allen is it can make three-point shots. He had the ball inside the paint. When it's, when it's going bad, it's going bad because you've got to take that. And that's the way 
what Gene Bartow feels about it, too, because he's, he's putting Thrash back in the game, knowing he's got to get some offense going somewhere. Allen can do it, but if he's afraid to take a 12-footer, he can't do you any good. Mm -hmm. Memphis State with the ball in the lead. Makes it so easy for them to draw in there because he can pick it both sides. And you got Hanford looking at it for <laughs> Hanford Hardaway, his second three pointer. He leads the team with eight. And it seems like he's had a quiet first half. Yeah, he did. Hardaway wanted to hear what you had to say about him, so he came racing over this way, chasing the loose ball. <laughs> I, now, come on, fess up. I saved you. Yes, you, you did. <laughs> I was looking down at the old book. <laughs> saved because that ball was about to ding you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al Drew it is. <laughs> That's teamwork. That's what teamwork do. Thank you so much. No problem. What we got right here, the Fishers having a little conversation here. This was, as the ball was going out, Billy Smith. I mean, they, they got a little aggressive, and he, he hit Frank Haywood, so the official call a, a foul off the ball, away from the ball foul. It'll be the second against Billy Smith, and that, of course, puts UAB back at the free throw line, and it's good on the try by Haywood. Frank Haywood, a sophomore out of Birmingham, averages five points and four rebounds per game. When UAB and Memphis State played, in January, the situation was similar almost to the extent UAB shot 33 foul shots and only made 12 of them. And, and tonight they're shooting it better from the free throw, from the free throw line, but they can't get any foul shots to go. I mean, uh, field goals to go. And you can't leave him oh. open. Billy Smith can fill it up from downtown. Yeah, and he'll start getting his confidence now. He's right at that point, he leads 11 points. Right where you think, oh, I can take a chance and shoot it and worry, worry about missing it. Albert Rodgers has been silent after a quick four points to begin the game. Allen's done a nice job on him inside. I'm telling you, it's not just, see, everybody is playing Rodgers. It's not one man. There's a nice little cut inside in the pass from Jackson. But this is good team defense. This is not an individual playing Rodgers and shutting him down. Because every time he turns in the center, there is another Tiger standing there to help. Lead back down to nine. Memphis State in front, under four minutes to go. Kicks it back out to Smith. No oh, good. Vaughn just got his third. Yep. Thrash had great position. Yeah, that was a bad play by David Vaughn. I mean, that's that's what the young players got to learn. If you're out of position, let it go. Now Larry Finch has got to get him out of the game. Memphis State personal number 50, David Vaughn. So you see the shot go up. You see just to the right. You see going up number 50. Yeah, Thrash had the position, and David Vaughn knows he's guilty. That's Shaw. <laughs> Well, you sound like you've had a little practice at, at saying that before. I want to remind you that you still have a chance to get down here for what should be two great nights of basketball tomorrow. Friday, the semifinals, and then, of course, a championship game on Saturday. Call Ticketmaster locally at 559-1212. Rash at the free throw line, and the left-hander is good. He is two out of two from there tonight. It's the only way that UAB has stayed in the game is on the line. And you've got to figure second half that the odds have got to come in their favor. If you shoot this badly now, then at some point the, the average, the law of averages have got to come back in your favor. Madlock, little head fake, then turns around, is left wide open, and he drains a 15-footer. No miscommunication. The UAB came down this time, went man to man, and backed off of Madlock. Eight points for the senior, Tony Madlock. This should, that, that's the way they've got to take advantage of it. That's when they can get baskets. That's good. That's why you can get back to the passes because the defense doesn't have a chance to set up and start centering on Rodgers. And now Rodgers has got to be a little more of a decoy, too. He's got to get it and start kicking it for people. Frank Haywood has come off the bench to put in five. He's been an offensive spark for UAB. They've been looking for a spark wherever they can get it. Oh, he traveled. Allen nails a jumper. He got away with a walk. from 11 down to 9 and back up to 11 9 again and it stands there with Memphis State in the lead foul called inside it'll go against Delbert Rogers 
little bit of impatience on the part of Rodgers that time. Because all he's got to do is wait. The defense is entirely different without David Vaughn. Because you're not looking at somebody almost seven feet tall standing behind you. With these guys, if Rodgers is patient, they can swing it to the weak side to him, and he can get it and put it up over them. So you see right here, just trying to fight for position. He's backing up. Yeah, he's backing up. And they also call, it's called the, the, the swim stroke. And that's when you take your arm and you, you kind of try to move the guy away with your arm. So the official's right on top of that call. That's a point of emphasis this year. Shot is good by Tim Duncan, who has seen very little playing time this season. Allen will get right back in there for UAB. And he replaces Frank Haywood, who gave the Blazers some good minutes. Good on both free throws, and it's pushed back up to an 11-point Tiger lead. Memphis State, a menacing defense. Shot is up. Oh, no, that's a bad play. No basket. That is a bad play there by Thrash. You've got to give that shot a chance to go in. I mean, Rogers works. I mean, he comes up with the loose ball. One of the few opportunities he gets to go, he still gets hacked. But that ball, well, I guess he, he, he saw it and didn't look like it was going in. But I, I still say, when the ball is on the rim, you've got to give it a chance to go in. Rogers had four points in the first five minutes and has not scored since. Top scorer in the great Midwest this season, little over 20 a game, also averaged seven rebounds. He has scored in double figures 41 games in a row. Standing man to man. Great pass into Duncan. Couldn't finish, got his own oh. rebound and swatted out of there by Brad. Mm. Mm, with authority. When you come here, Mr. Duncan, please watch that stuff with this bitch. <laughs> watch it. <laughs> Bad luck with the ball. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe Duncan didn't want it again down there, did he? <laughs> Duncan, you better dunk it if <laughs> you get a chance. UAB trying to get that lead under double figures here in the final two minutes and 20 seconds of the first half. Blazers finish four and six in the conference. Memphis State five and five. Tigers the four seed. The Blazers number five. Working inside and drawing the foul is Elbert Rogers. And a few words exchange there between Rogers and Duncan after Duncan fouled him on the arm. Well, a few words have been going on on both sides. I mean, guys are into their um, <clears throat> street vernacular out here and <laughs> letting people know you can't guard me and don't bring that weak stuff in here. I've seen a lot of that going on. Yeah, it seems as though it's happened all over college basketball this season for whatever reason. You got, the officials are going to have to keep an eye on that because that sometimes uh, can be considered taunting. And, and, and that's the that's where fights can, can start to break out. You keep teasing a guy, teasing a guy, and then when you get the best end of it, he just he loses it. So the officials are going to have to pay some attention to that. Seven points now for Elbert Rodgers. It's an eight-point lead. UAB certainly has faced a stern test from these Tigers when they've had the ball on offense. Well, I'll tell you what, but for as much as these teams move up and down, they really haven't turned it over that much. Nine, nine times, you know, in 18 minutes is pretty good. There's one against Duncan as he traveled down low. You know what that's from? That's from Duncan, Duncan and uh, Rogers on this end. Roger, uh, Duncan got the ball down there and wanted to show Rogers that he could do it too, and he got him, got his mind ahead of the basketball. So UAB with a golden chance now to try and get back in this. Oh, ball. good find, good find. And Thrash finishes. Seven for Thrash, and the lead is down to six. That foul on David Vaughn was a big foul because all of this started to happen when Vaughn went out of the game. And he's, he's just big and he can take up space. Billy Smith being guarded by Jackson, one on Moon. Oh, it went in. Is it going to count? No way. NBA rules that counts. Foul will go against Jackson and he'll go to the line for a one and one. No, a two shot. A two shot. They're over 10. Yeah. 
Oh, in the NBA, this number is continuation. You see right here, Jack, there's no question. Jackson fouled him. He actually fouled him before that. No, no, Tom, I see you over here giving me the look. Like, come on. I like please. seeing the guy earns that when he earns it. Way, he, earns it. <laughs> he fouled him on the ground. This is blew it early. Sorry, Tom. Checking in for the first time, Carter Long for UAB. Stanley Jackson with a couple of fouls will leave. And Long can come into the game as you see Jackson have a seat there after a well-deserved uh, effort. Long can shoot the three-point shot. He's somebody that, you know, if you get him open and get set, he can stick a couple of those. And going into the end of the half, that could be a big momentum boost for UAB, who have struggled just to stay this close. They're down eight with a minute ten to go. Albert Rogers going to try and work on Duncan. Shot clock at 20 and a foul. Oh, he set him up. Rogers is getting the best of him. He is getting the best of Duncan. You'll see right here to the left of your screen. Now watch it. Rogers is going and then up. Oh, and then he makes sure he acts it out. And Duncan tries to say, I'm not guilty, but the official is looking at him and said, I think you are. You've got three. Albert Rogers with seven, looking for his eighth, and cannot get the shooter's roll. He's four of three of five now from the strike. Well, he's normally a 77% shooter, so these he should be knocking down. Rogers' second try, no good, and UAB misses a chance there. This misses a big chance because what happens now, they're 41 seconds, they're 40 seconds to go in the game. The problem could have been for uh, Memphis State, you can come back and go at Duncan because he's got three fouls and he will not get his fourth unless he does something just totally ill-advised. Shot clock at 25, game clock at 30. Oh, he's down low. Oh! Push it up. UAB looking to run. Wilkerson, and now he'll set it up. Go down low to Rodgers. Working on Duncan. Fade away. Not there. Battle for the rebound. Hardaway has it. Ten seconds left. And they'll play for the final shot. They'll go open it up. They'll just, they call it one four flat and just let him go. Because he can draw people and he can kick. No good. And time expires in the first half. So our count here at halftime. State Tigers leading Gene Bartos Blazers, a count of 38-30, and win the first half, obviously, for UAB. I have to believe that Barto can draw something positive out of all of this, considering the fact that his team has played a miserable offensive first half, yet you're well in the ballgame. Well, I, exactly, and I talked to Gene Barto this afternoon. He was worried if his team shot the ball poorly. He didn't think he had a very good chance, but I happen to agree with you. They've shot the ball poorly, still been able to stay here under 10 points, and I think that's very, very important. Now they can come out and in the first two possessions, if they hold and score both times, they got a chance to, you know, to be down four points. And you got a basketball game here. All righty, our score, an eight-point lead for the Memphis State Tigers in round one of the great Midwest Conference Tournament. Of course, in game two, a little bit later on tonight, it'll be Marquette and St. Louis. Let's now go back upstairs to J.P. Thank you very much, Tom and Quinn. What a strange game this was. You know, Anthony Hardaway didn't even score a point until the clock said less than nine minutes to go. And then with about 8-12 or so, Vaughn scored his first two, but he's in foul trouble. It was an 11-point lead. It is now down to eight. But UAB really fighting hard, despite the fact that they have shot as low as 16% at one time. The rebounds and the free throws were helping them. But so far, it's Tony Madlock and Billy Smith unofficially leading the charge for the Tigers. They have 10 points each. A lot coming your way here at halftime. We'll look at halftime highlights and stats and a special guest with a sports writer from Sports Illustrated. Stay with us. Returning to Chicago Stadium for the first time in 18 years. This is the great Midwest Conference, and we've got the quarterfinals starting off UAB and Memphis State. And coming up next, we've got Marquette against St. Louis. St. Louis is going to be hard-pressed to field as many as six healthy players. They've had all kinds of injury problems this year, and as recently as last week when their promising freshman Julian Winfield went out with a wrist injury. So you've got Marquette coming up next. And then plenty more action here in Chicago Friday and Saturday. Friday, you'll have the semifinals starting at 7. 
11 and 9.30 p.m. for game two. Saturday, the championship at 6.30 Central Time. You can call Ticketmaster for all of the ticket information. The number's on your screen, 312-559-1212. 312-559-1212. Get in on the first, the very first great Midwest Conference basketball tournament here in Chicago. When we come back, we'll chat with Sports Illustrated's Alex Wolf. But here at halftime, the Tigers of Memphis State lead 38-30. Hey, Dave. I know. Chicken cardon bleu. That's with the UAB Blazers who shot very poorly in the first half. How poorly, you'll know later when our play-by-play -play team give you all of the updated stats. But right now, it's the highlights portion of halftime. And we're going to show you some rebounds, some fast breaks, and showtime off of the Douglas rebound. Long touchdown pass. Hardaway seizes a player behind him. Great bounce pass to Smith. And Billy Smith will score two of his ten points in that first half of play. Hardaway again. Coming back to the other side. He's going to look for Allen on the fast break. A couple of passes, some great ball movement, and Allen is the man who will finish up Kelvin Allen on those two points. And then it's a little showtime for Mr. Hardaway, the conference player of the year, also the newcomer of the year. Nobody stopping Anthony Hardaway. We'll see if they can stop him in the second half. We'll look at stats when we come back to Chicago. Memphis State leading over the UAB Blazers. Time right now to take a look at halftime stats. We return you to our broadcast team of Tom Brenneman and Quinn Buckner. All right, JP, thanks very much. A first half, Quinn controlled by and large by Memphis State, but really unable to pull away. Some of the statistics will indicate why they were unable to do so, and UAB just didn't shoot it. I mean, you can't say any more than that. They shot 28%. If you shoot that kind of percentage, you've got major problems. You see 43 for Memphis State. The free throws are good for UAB. 14 out of 18, you'll take that all day long. As far as rebounding is concerned, that goes in UAB's favor. Well, I tell you, not only does it go in their favor, but in the rebounding, they had nine offensive rebounds, and that's what's positive. That's why they're still close in the game. They haven't turned it over much, haven't been able to make a three-point shot, haven't stole the ball. They got a couple blocks. So basically what they've been able to do is keep themselves out of trouble. You know, they haven't done anything to hurt, help themselves, but they haven't done a whole lot to hurt themselves either. If you're Gene Bartow, what do you say at halftime? Keep shooting the basketball, because you, you're not going to continue to shoot 28%. They are about a 48, 47% shooting team. You've got to figure the number will come in your favor and continue to play defense. Corey Jackson with a basketball. He opens in the backcourt with Stanley Jackson. Haywood getting the start up front, number 25, along with Elbert Rogers and Clarence Thrash. So two changes in the UAB lineup. Memphis State, the same starting five, which got him out of the gate and the eight-point halftime lead. Vaughn, Douglas, and Smith, along with Hardaway and Madlock. Run into a little bit of a weave, man-to-man -man defense. You want to try to catch somebody in bad position off of the switch. Get it down low to Haywood, blocked by Hardaway. He waited. There was no way he was going to foul him, but he waited for those kind of plays to make. Hardaway in the first half had eight points, five rebounds, three assists. Two three zone coming out. Forced, try to force it up from the outside. You got to know where the shooters are in the zone, though. There's one of them. Had a good defensive ball oh, by Haywood. I'm telling you, this was a great play by Anthony Hardaway. He tipped that ball. And he knew exactly where he was tipping the ball and took it right to Douglas. Douglas now with four. He only had a deuce in the first half. Ten-point lead for the Tigers. Billy Chapman getting set to check back in for UAB as they continue in this weave out beyond the three-point strike. You know why they want to have the weave as you see the ball go out of bounds? What they want to do is involve at least three players on the perimeter. And what it allows, it doesn't allow Memphis State to do, is to guard underneath. Now, Vaughn is switching down there with Douglas, but otherwise they can't collapse in because every time Rodgers gets the ball, there had been three people around him. This particular time, there were only two, and, and fortunately for UAB, they get the ball back. Chapman and Wilkerson back in for UAB. 
Jackson tied up. No, he was hacked on the arm. It'll go against Madlock in the 4,000 or so. Memphis State faithful aren't pleased with that call. Well, the ball will come right here, right in front of you. And then there's a trap. Well, that was a slap on the arm. So I got to go with the official. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you've really gone go out on a little twice tonight. <laughs> I'm just lead. that kind of guy, you know? <laughs> oh, well, I'm telling you something. That's a good no call here because Anthony hit the ball. Oh, he threw it out of bounds. He threw it out of bounds. Oh, they got a good no call. And Larry uh, Trench is right in front of us complaining about it, but it was a good no call by the official. And then Stanley Jackson had a man wide open and overshot him, and Stanley Jackson will come to the bench. Corey Jackson comes back in. The reason they stay in the game is they don't have turnovers, and right away, Stanley Jackson, if you're not giving me points, you can't throw the ball away. we got to get a, at least a look at the ball. David Vaughn buries a 15-footer. He can do that. From 15, he's good. If you get him out to 17, he'll struggle, but he can make that pace with the basket 15-footer. David Vaughn now with four, only had two points and two rebounds in his three foul first half. 12 point lead for the Tigers. Jackson, good dish down low. Haywood couldn't hang on, and Douglas has it taken right back away. Chapman will dunk it in. Field they got, UAB got what they wanted out of the, uh, the spread, the weed. They, they get players to get lost a little bit defensively. They gave them to get a little penetration. Unfortunately, we're able to get the ball after a, a missed opportunity just prior to that. Good feed down low to Douglas, and a foul is called beforehand. Billy Smith found the open man in low, and Douglas turns around and tells him the same thing. Nice feed. Foul will go against Wilkerson, and that is his first. Against the Blazers here in the second half. Rogers right back in, replaces Clarence Thrash. Vaughn again from 15. That's a shot. I mean, that's why everybody likes this young man because at his height, he can shoot the jump shot. But again, as I said, one step beyond the foul line, he starts to stretch it in. And he's young, so he gets a, he'll get a chance to, to learn what his range is. At this point, he doesn't know it. Go against Elbert Rogers underneath, it looks like. Rogers still muscling for position, picks up his second. Well, you, you, you see coming across the screen, and they call the pick there. That, that is a nice little bump. I mean, unless we're blocking in football, that, that's a foul. I don't know how else you're going to call it. Smith to Douglas, good head fake, got the defender in the air and kisses it in. Well, I'll tell you, UAB, they, they better stop the bleeding here. They, they've got to get a basket. Of a sudden, UAB trailing Memphis State by 14 points. That, that's why I said that because it, it's 14, and it can very easily, with a team like Memphis State and, and Anthony Hardaway, that's five seconds defensively. You see, you're seeing mental lapses happen, and this is where, like, this, the last basket happened relatively quickly. Now you get a turnover, and then before you know it, it's a 20-point game. And the way UAB shooting the ball, they don't have any chance to get back in a 20-point game. UAB needing the defensive stand here, and Tony Madlock, whose team has made the most of rare turnovers tonight by UAB. We'll see if they can cash in, as Douglas all of a sudden has become the man here in the second half. Vaughn, a couple of great moves, but walked when he lost his foot. No, he was pushed, they say. Well, the ball goes inside to Vaughn, and he tries to make a move. No, he fell. Uh, there's no way the official just They do this occasionally. They blow it, and he blew that call. Reginald Allen going against Chapman. That's his third. Wilkerson and Haywood lead. Allen and Jackson come back in. And now Clarence Thrash will come in and certainly replace Willie Chapman. Team Bartow just searching for any kind of combination, trying to get some offense going down here. He's also got a bigger body in Thrash to try to guard, guard David Vaughn, who's just starting to become a real threat offensively. Three baskets here in the second half by Vaughn. Sixteen point spread in favor of Larry Finch's Memphis State Tigers looking for their 19th win. Locked out of bounds by Vaughn. Please let it be blocked out of bounds. <laughs> that one was behind the backboard. <laughs> 
48-32. The Tigers have come out smoking here in the second half. In the Mid-South, Chevy trucks are first. Beating the Blazers. Now is your chance to win $1 million. Clip the Gillette coupon in your Sunday newspaper on March 15th and run to your local retail store for details and see if you've won a trip to the NCAA Final Four weekend and a chance to take the Gillette three-point challenge and win a $1 million. Now, don't just stand there. Get on your way. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. And Memphis State on a big-time run here to begin the second half. And it's important to get a basket out of a timeout. If UAB can do this out of the timeout, it gives you a little bit of a good morale feeling. You see the field goal, five for six versus one of three. Not only is UAB not getting shots in the basket, but they're not getting very many shots. Turning the ball over, making some questionable decisions, quite frankly. you got to shoot that. <laughs> Rodgers got a basket. Yeah, he's lucky he caught the pass. Uh, yeah, he is lucky he caught the pass, and he, he was lucky the official didn't, didn't see the travel that he made. 14-point <laughs> lead. Jackson again. Boy, does he hustle. Oh, he gets after it. Rodgers has the ball. He's tied up. And the possession error, I believe, is in Memphis State's favor. UAB had the ball to begin the second half. Possession to Memphis State about Stanley Jackson he had six points in that first half but six rebounds and easily saved four or five balls on their way out of bounds he had a great effort he, he can't get the ball to go into the basket and it's important for young kids when you play basketball I mean if you're capable of scoring you've got to help your team that way but there are some other things you can do that can help the team other than scoring you can get loose balls you can defend uh, you can rebound so it's good to see Jackson out here doing some things other than what everybody knows him for and that's scoring into this Memphis State team. Under five minutes gone by here in the second half, and the Tigers looking for his second round date with the ball. What a move by Douglas, and then he lost his footing, saved out of bounds, and Douglas gets it back, and then he's fouled by Allen. Well, I don't know why Allen didn't think that was a foul. First of all, it's a good pass. And then head and shoulder fake, and Rogers is just out of it, and Jackson anticipates it, and, and he probably could have just grabbed that, and then from there, it just got to be a tussle. UAB with a basketball, looking to push it ahead. Jackson will fire from three, and it's again in and out. But if you're a scorer, you got to shoot it. You know, that's why you got here. Stanley Jackson. 17 a game, almost a 50% shooter, and just simply cannot buy a shot here tonight. UAB personal number four, Stanley Jackson. Stanley Jackson is third foul. Here is the all-newcomer team in the great Midwest Conference. Guys, you're going to hear a lot about down the road. Nathan from DePaul, Hardaway, and Vaughn in Memphis State. We'll see Tony Miller a little bit later. And for those of you who have not seen Anthony Buford play, he is a terrific player. Yeah, he's a he's, uh, sight to behold. He's, he's got a lot of skills. To be quite honest, I was surprised he wasn't a first-team all-conference selection. He's had that kind of a year. That's why they didn't ask you to vote. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's it's a foul. <laughs> Boy, he is cold. I know he comes from this area of Chicago. It's cold outside and cold in the heart. No wonder Bob Knight got his trouble getting along with you. I got to keep you on your toes. You got that right. <laughs> Jackson is fourth foul and has to leave the game, and that's a blow for UAB. Now they've got to find someplace else to get offense. Now the guy, that, there are two people. Thrash, we talked about him. He hadn't done it. And I, I, I think Allen is afraid to shoot the ball now. Corey Jackson called for the foul. Looked like, now to be quite honest, very little contact, but he's whistled for the UAB foul. Number 12, Corey Jackson. His fourth, Corey Jackson and Stanley Jackson with four fouls apiece. Well, that's a starting guard tandem, and he hadn't been able to get anything out of them. So that now he's got to go to the bench and come up with somebody else to try to get some more answers. One hand. Frank Haywood will come in in just a moment as Madlock is good on the first free throw try. Corey 
Jackson averages seven. Stanley Jackson, 17. That's 24 points out of your lineup on the bench. I think what, what hurts UAB more than that is Corey Jackson. Could, you would think he could penetrate and be able to get some of the uh, some easy baskets. What we have here is what I was talking about earlier. This is Ed Hightower stepping in and telling Allen, and he's also telling Anthony Hardaway to cut out this tunnel because they, they've been doing it all game. And I said the official had to get on top of it, and obviously they, they talked amongst themselves as they do at halftime in order to maintain control of this game. Bad luck, good on both free throws. Six of seven from the line tonight. They had to bring Wilkerson in and, and let him play a little more point guard. That's not what they want to do because Wilkerson's not going to beat you very much off the dribble. Rodgers to the bucket, cannot find the way in. Douglas, like a big bear, just wraps that ball up. A big kid, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Turnover against Smith. Still a lot of time left to go. Certainly UAB, a chance to get back into this ball game. Maryland stuns Clemson in round one of the ACC tournament. I believe Maryland, though, is on probation can't go on to the NCAA if they were to win that tournament. Yeah, I think you're right. But, you know, it also goes to show you what the ACC tournament can be like. And, and very much like any tournament, I mean, at any given moment, somebody can play well. Allen, no good on the three. Vaughn rips it out of there for Memphis State. And knocks Douglas down, if you can believe that. See the, the confidence and the poise of this young man? I mean, this is the first year, first time playing in two years organized ball, but he's just so patient. Douglas a fade away, can't get it to go, and Haywood the rebound. Boy, UAB is just content on slowly bringing the ball up the court and really not trying to push it up ahead. Well, that's another reason why they miss Corey Jackson, because they don't have anybody that can really do it and then make decisions that control the ball, and then they force it down to Rodgers, and he can't shoot the ball over Vaughn. But again, that, that was the, the concern coming in. I talked again, Maury uh, Bartow, the assistant coach for UAB, said, hey, we can't, if we're not shooting the ball reasonably, we don't have a very good chance. And they're shooting the ball not only not reasonably, but horribly. Tiger. Out of bounds, still Tiger ball. A couple of substitutions. Carter Long will come in, number three for UAB. Ernest Smith for the Tigers. Allen will sit down, and Smith will sit down. Houston College, New Providence. First round of the Big East Tournament. All the tournaments around America this weekend. Four big ones to keep an eye on, of course. Right here, the great Midwest. You have the ACC, the Big East, and the SEC. Allen back in. Douglas comes out. Douglas has had a good second half. Well, I thought he played well in the first half. When Rodgers didn't get started in the first half, it was because Douglas did a very good job keeping his body on him so he couldn't get any easy baskets. Hardaway tries a three. No good. Out of bounds. And Rodgers, alas, to touch it. Things are just not going Elbert Rodgers' way. His team down big to the Tigers, 50-34. Avenue, the Omni Park Central is two blocks out. The beautiful Central Park, just a few blocks from the theater district in minutes from Madison Square Garden. Rates begin at $99.50 per room, not per person. For reservations, call 1-800-THE-OMNI. That's 1-800-843-6664. Back with Quinn Buckner, I'm Tom Brenneman, Memphis State. Almost midway through this first half, a 16-point lead. Looking for more, but blocked away by Rodgers as Allen tries inside see the field goal percentage hadn't gotten much better for UAB they're still shooting around 25 percent UAB only 27 percent in the first half it has been an ice cold night here at Chicago Stadium Hardaway forces it up there Vaughn follows gets it again and then he was fouled inside pushed by I believe Elbert Rogers Here's some more of that talk going on. Technical foul against Rodgers. Uh, you see a little bit of frustration coming out here. And they've got to pull Rodgers away from the officials. All right, you see the, the shot right there by Anthony. And then, then you see Vaughn go up. Yeah, and, and, and 
that's a good call because the right arm that you saw come up and, and push David Vaughn was Rodgers, and then Rodgers complained about it. I saw him complain earlier because he thought he got pushed when the one ball went out of bounds, and the official kind of stared at him on the way off the court, so I'm not surprised to see the technical call. Vaughn will shoot the personal free throws first. He'll get two since he was in the act of shooting, closing in on that seasonal averages, this freshman out of White Creeks, Tennessee. Eight second half points for David Vaughn has certainly put a cramp in Gene Bartos style here for the second 20 minutes. All of a sudden an 18 point game and they'll just tell Vaughn, well, you've hit two in a row, so go ahead and shoot the technical foul shot. Usually do that because the guy on the line has got a rhythm. You keep him in the rhythm. Except for David Long just broke that rhythm. <laughs> for Gene Barto, I mean, and this is this is any coach's frustration. You can coach your team. You can have time off. You can put them in the right spots. You can't shoot the ball for them. And, and UAB just has not shot the ball well enough. Some of it has been the defense, I think, of Memphis State. I think they played pretty well defensively. But I think as much of the problem has been UAB. They haven't force the action a little bit more, you know, try to get some, as I said, uh, secondary break shots, which means before you go down, which is the primary break, before everybody gets back, there's still a chance to move the ball around quickly and get something, and they just haven't been able to do that. 19 points of difference with Memphis State in the lead, and the Tigers certainly have gotten the work on the boards here in the second half after being out-rebounded in the first. They're looking for Vaughn here in the second half, and he is coming through big. Well, there's no way that anyone on the, any one person can guard him on the UAB team. Nobody. 13 points for Vaughn, 11 of those in the second half. So that's a shot you don't even go in there to take. You've got to shoot the jump shot. I mean, if you miss it, you miss it, but it's a wide open 12 footer. And another rebound for the Tigers, leading by 21 points. Again, the way the brackets are set up, Memphis State with a win here tonight would take on the top seed. Big run here in the last nine minutes for Memphis State. The Tigers would take on DePaul tomorrow night. And then the winner of the second game between Marquette and St. Louis would battle the second seed, Cincinnati. There was a foul by Long, trying to intentionally grab Madlock. Forced up, followed up in, and good by Ernest Smith. UAB's getting themselves in so much trouble, they can't even get a foul call. Not even halfway through. Now we are halfway through the second half. Another jumper will not go. Over the back against Haywood. Yeah, that's on Haywood. As long as you're taking those shots like that, you, you don't give yourself a very good chance to, to get anything done. As you look at the brackets there, where we said the Paul would play the winner of this game. At this stage, it looks... Ten minutes to go. Memphis State has clearly got to join in. Marquette and St. Louis in the second game. The winner of that game will play Cincinnati. Marquette's playing pretty well, and, and DePaul and, and actually St. Louis have the same kinds of problems. They have some absences. DePaul has some injuries, had some disciplinary reasons to lose, lose some guys. And St. Louis has just had some injuries and just a very, very difficult time this year. Cincinnati and DePaul, for those of you who have not followed the conference all year long, actually tied for first place, each at eight and two in the conference, but the only two losses the Bearcats had in the conference were to Joey Myers' Blue Demons, thus the Demons the number one seed in the tournament. But you have to believe, at least right now, for the reasons you just mentioned, probably the team to beat is Cincinnati in the tournament. Well, I would say that's definitely the case. That they're the team to beat. But I think in any team, there, any tournament, there's a team to beat. And I think in those tournaments, there are some teams that can beat the team that you talk about. In this case, it's Cincinnati. So the fun part about this, and I've said this repeatedly about any tournament, is that anything can happen. Out of bounds, but it looks as though a foul was called beforehand. And indeed there was. It'll go against number 20, Tony Madlock. Memphis State first of number 20, Tony Madlock. His second, the team's second. Boy, the second foul called against Memphis State here in the second half. There's a reach in against Hardaway. Well, that was the point that I was about to raise as you said that. Is, is right now, you're looking at a team that just got three fouls halfway through. So the foul shot shooting that UAB had in the first half is really not a factor here because they can't get to the line. 
much to the chagrin of that one. Boy, what a job he's done, though, Quinn. They started basketball at UAB 14 years ago. Nine times, won 20 or more games, and Carter Long nails a three. If he could get warmed up, they might be able to climb back. They need somebody, just any person to get warm from the outside, and that same person has to be able to pass the ball into Rodgers because that's what they're not able to do is get Rodgers going. But you're talking about Gene Barto. It's a man I've known for many years. I went to China with Gene Barto, which was an interesting experience. I won't tell you how long ago, but we, we went to China together. We're all well aware it was decades ago, in fact. Oh, so you got me back. Very nice. No, I'm saving my best material for a little bit later on. Oh, my goodness. Hardaway looked like he was six feet away from Jackson when he caught the ball and blocked it away. Oh. It is scary to think, Quinn, and you, an NBA standout for 10 years. Good dish there to Rodgers. The shot won't go, but get a chance to watch Anthony Hardaway play. You played in the NBA. What do you think? He can play. He, he needs he needs to, first of all, get his education. That, that's my first suggestion. I know it's hard to tell him to turn down the, the dollars that are there, but he needs to get his education. He's got to play. He's got to put on some weight. I mean, he, he's... About as big as Irvin Johnson in terms of height, but he's much thinner than Irvin, Irvin is. But I'll tell you what, the skills are there. He's got heart. You know, he shoots it reasonably well. He's, he's a little bit of better of a standstill shooter than he is on the move. You know, when he has somebody running at him and he has to make some adjustments, he doesn't shoot it nearly as smoothly. But that's something that he can learn. Albert Rogers with 11 points. 42 games in a row now. Rogers has reached double figures in scoring, and that is a UAB school record. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he, didn't get, he, he didn't even look like he saw it. He was right in front of him. Rogers trying to draw the foul, and he does against Allen. 22-point lead for Memphis State. No, no, look, he acts like he, does, he barely didn't see the team. What he did was look at the rim and tell him, that's where I'm going to throw it. If you're going to get it, know what to do with it. I think they communicated that pretty well. Rodgers back on the free throw line. 8.35 left, and barring an absolute miracle. Memphis State will advance on to the semis tomorrow night. I wouldn't say miracle is the word. I mean, there's still, you know, there are games that have been won like this. I don't know what you call it, but... Yeah, okay. well, I'm interested <laughs> to hear what would you call it. Not quitting. <laughs> Just not quitting. Oh, threw that one away. And that's how you get back in games. Plays like that. Lakers basketball. Larry Finch. Urging and willing his team to stay mentally focused with his 20-point lead and 8 minutes and 25 seconds left to go. Long the shot. He's making them get it to him. But that makes a difference when you got somebody coming out of there, you like, long. Whipped across to Jackson. He'll fire it up. And it goes. On the three. You know, that might have been the toughest shot he's taken all night. Some but of the that, other ones he's missed, he's been wide open. But that, that may have been what he needs because his shots have been, been flat. And when somebody's coming at you, you shoot it with a little bit more arc. And you obviously have to concentrate a little bit differently because you know you've got somebody in your face. No quit in this UAB team. Foul called, and Hardaway won't get the shot to go. Yeah, that's on uh, Stanley uh, Jackson. On Corey Jackson. That's that's five for him, I believe. Mm -hmm. We have him with you five. Be personal, number 12, Corey Jackson, his fifth personal foul. So Corey Jackson is fouled out. But he will see three more great Midwest Conference tournaments, only a freshman out of Auburn, Alabama. Well, he goes out. He had a tough game. Uh, I thought Memphis State did a good job keeping him out of the game, not even allowing him to penetrate, create opportunities for Rodgers. Uh, Crash, getting, getting people some easy baskets. When he comes in, you know, you've got to bring in Wilkerson, normally the stopper. They've got to make him the ball handler. And Wilkerson's number one job here is get the ball to Jackson or Long. Both of them have made outside shots to try to give yourself a chance to get, get back in this thing. 
Hardaway good on the free throw. First time he's been there all night tonight, in fact. And Hardaway is first point in the second half now with nine. Now that's one part of the game that I think he, he's got to make sure he, he needs to get to the line eight to ten times. Timeout on the floor. Memphis State leading UAB by 19. the most beautiful big city in America, Chicago, Illinois, the quarterfinals of the great Midwest Conference. And in game one, it's been all Memphis State. Larry Fitch's Tigers probably sitting right on that fence in terms of an NCAA berth. Big wins this year over Arkansas, Missouri, and Tulane. But certainly every bit the club they've been like all season long in opening up this margin over the 20 and 7 UAB Blazers. I'm Tom Brenneman along with Quinn Buckner. This is the home city for Mr. Buckner. Yes, indeed. I grew up about 20 miles south of here. I was born in Chicago and got to see my mother and my sister today. See, this is a nice little homecoming. And you know what? It's really nice to see college basketball back at the stadium because those decades ago you were talking about with me, there was a lot of good basketball played here. So it's good to see it back. And by the way, it wasn't many decades ago either. About four, right? <laughs> <laughs> using that new man. <laughs> right. 19-point lead for the Tigers. Billy Smith just hands it back to Hardaway, the quarterback, albeit his first year of eligibility. And the rebound story, a big reason why Memphis State's been able to open up this lead. But, you know, that's been the case in, in all the games they played. One of the game in uh, January was 41-32. to 32. So the rebounding has always been in Memphis State's favor. What they've done better tonight is <laughs> they've shot it a lot better than UAB. Long goes out. Get our first look at Willie Shears, a sophomore out of Marion, Alabama. That's Shears jump. reaches in. That's a jump ball. Yeah, that's jump. And the possession arrow it belongs to the Blazers. That's where... As David Vaughn gets older, he'll get some natural body strength. But what he's also got to do is just, get, you know, he's got to lift some weights to get some strength, too. Well, Sears isn't done, Shy. Nope, comes right in and <laughs> fires one up there. Tipped by a host of people inside of bounds. Still belongs to Memphis State. Well, the Tigers have been out-rebounded in each of their last five games. And just to give you an idea of what that means, in their final five of the season, UAB just went three and two. So when they crash aboard more times than not, their chances of winning are extremely good. But I guess you could make that same argument for just about any team. Well, except for UAB, it's, it's big because it's the offensive rebounding that makes them that much better. It helps if they get defensive rebounds because they can run. But you can get some putback opportunities. But when a team shoots the ball like they've shot to Night. You need all the help you can get. That's Hard five seconds. Yep. And, and Larry Finch just told, and he calls him Penny, that's a nickname his grandmother gave him, to, to pick the ball at the last sequence. He got after him for that. And he's probably going to take him out of the game because that's the second time he told him that. And just prior to this also, Hardaway threw away the pass. So you got to start wondering what, about Hardaway's concentration about now. And you want to save him because as it stands, you do have another game to play. <laughs> Under six minutes left to go in this one, and the Tigers leading by 19. UAB's got to get to work in a hurry. Shears kicks it off to Jackson for three. No good. Rebound to Rogers. Banging bodies down in there and taken away by Smith and Hardaway control. the 6-7 guard out. That, that's their option. That, that's, a, that's a pretty good luxury to have. Take away and then a reach in foul. And the man was originally stolen from number 35 of Memphis State, Billy Smith. That'll be his third. And the team's fifth. And it is. Madlock is coming in for, uh, for uh, Hardaway. Right there, just some good hands by Shears. Well, I hope, <laughs> hope that was a foul. <laughs> I agree with the official there. <laughs> I knew you were a man who right. took chances. Right at the five-minute mark, Rodgers is going toe-to-toe -to -toe like an offensive lineman down in the trenches with anybody Memphis State can offer up. 
And he draws a foul. There may be yeah, some nastiness in this game uh, if something's not taken care of very shortly. Well, they got to watch it. Watch all of a sudden that elbow, and that's what David Vaughn was talking about because there was no question about it. The elbow, elbow by Rogers was prior to the foul. David Vaughn walked over to the official, as you see, he has his fourth foul, and said to the official, watch the elbow. But that angle, it was tough for the official to see because the angle was away from the official who, had, who made the call. Rodgers only three field goals tonight, so his point total a wee bit misleading. Douglas, another big body will come in there and replace David Vaughn, who has been the spark plug here in the second half. Yeah, he has been. He came in first three baskets. They got him the, the basketball because he's the tallest player on the court. And within about eight to ten feet from the basket, clearly the best offensive player. Because Rodgers just, just could not get on track. Take away by the Blazers. Rodgers going to the basket, lays it in. 63-48, UAB. Anthony may get back in the game if they get this steal. Tigers just trying to get it across. Now they do, and the shot is missed, but Shear is on the foul. is getting back in the game because <laughs> for sure uh, Larry Finch knows he can't afford to start getting a bunch of turnovers started because the lead is down 15 and you give you know a couple more chances you get it down there 10 and then confidence starts to flow and anything can happen from there. First free throw is off the mark by Ernest Smith. Two out of five from there tonight. Rattles it in. 64-48, Memphis State. If you really can get a three-pointer out of it, it would have been good, because that would have been a four-point exchange for him. Smith with Jackson in hot pursuit. Shear is going to the deck, and then lost it out of bounds. Good hustle there. Well, Shears has really been a spark off the, off the bench. I mean, he's come and been going down on the ground for the ball. It's a nice combination when you got Shears and Jackson and playing the way they do. Shears goes out. Shears, a two-time MVP in the city of Atlanta, led his team, high school team, to three consecutive state championships. Only a sophomore, so he'll see lots of playing time come next year. This gotta go to. Hard away and it bounced in off the top of the backboard. That's the shooter's touch. When you can shoot it like that and it hits the rim and go in. But that's also a prayer answer, too. <laughs> you got that right. Take away by the Tigers. They look ahead. And Matlock wisely, the senior, will reload the offense and try and burn a little time. Smith doesn't care. <laughs> he must be looking at a different clock than you. Let's go for Long is short. And again, here come the Tigers. Two on one break. Madlock will take it himself and lay it in and draws a foul by Rogers. So Memphis State. away with a little something here because what you can't see is he takes the ball and he gives that to the official very abruptly and the official I've got to tell you it shows some great restraint because of the emotional state that Rogers has to be and he's been frustrated everything he's tried to do has come out wrong so and he threw it at the official and the official just kind of calmly just took it and went on and made his call Gene Bartow didn't like seeing it either in fact Rogers has been taken out of the game called on the floor. It's been all Memphis State. Gene Bartow's team trailing by 21. From 
from Chicago and Memphis State with 317 to go leading immediately following this game will be continuing our coverage of the tournament from Chicago Stadium with the corner final game between the Billikens of St. Louis and the Marquette Warriors that's tonight at 10 30 p.m. Eastern Time 9 30 Central be sure to join us for more exciting great Midwest Conference basketball and we'll be with you throughout the entire weekend. Two games tomorrow night, of course, down to the semis when DePaul will take on the winner. This game, Cincinnati, the winner of our next game. Blazers retain possession. I mean, that play was somewhat symbolic of what uh, UAB has tried to do all night. Gene just, he's tried everything he can try. You, you can see he's just about at wit's in here. Shears will fire it up. No good. Chapman the rebound, lost control, and now they'll scramble down on the floor, and it's still UAB ball. Well, with 2.55 left, when we have a chance to perhaps look ahead for a moment tomorrow night, maybe some of the fans aren't familiar with a situation involving the Blue Demons. Curtis Price, yesterday during practice, a season ending, yeah, anterior cruciate ligament knee injury. And boy, you talk about some adversity. This young man lost his mother and sister a couple of years ago within two months of one another. And now all of a sudden his season ends just as he was looking forward. Quinn, a lot like you, a native Chicagoan, wanted to play here at the stadium and will not get that chance at least this year. Well, the tough part about it is that's a career ending uh, injury for him because he had surgery on his wrist and he had to sit out and, and now he has this injury and this is uh, the anterior cruciate is the one that uh, Danny Manning and the NBA has had uh, there have been a number of players that have really struggled to come back from that injury so you know let's just hope that he has the surgery come back and he's able to go out if he wants to play pickup he's able to do that but more importantly that he's able to walk but for DePaul they, they lose him they, they've had the, uh, for disciplinary reasons put Stern off of the team David Booth on two bad ankles so this is not the same team that everybody was talking about had an NCAA, uh, you know, lock. Jump up. Chapman the jump hook. So they'll get a severe test tomorrow night by these Tigers. Boy, this is a talented team. Foul on Douglas. Got hacked on the arm by either Chapman or Haywood. Lasers foul, 41. Willie Chapman. Memphis State, the kind of team, Quinn, that could walk out of here with the championship. The Tigers. It won't be a walk for them. I mean, you may be right that they could win it, but it's not going to be a walk for them. They've got a game here that they, <clears throat> pardon me, got, a, got, them, got them early in terms of UAB, and UAB just never got on track. But with DePaul, they could end up getting a break, but at some point you got to run into Cincinnati, as you see, Mr. Dick Versace. <laughs> Had a guy call him the human Q-tip. <laughs> But Dick is a good friend and now a fellow commentator. And now an enemy that you've re repeated that human Q-tip no, story. No, we were actually on a show together, and that was what they called him. They had a name for me that was, was a, a, a favorable name. I don't remember it, but <laughs> sure you don't. <laughs> but they called him the human Q-tip. He actually didn't mind it. I mean, Dick's got a great team. We're talking about a sense of humor. One of the best. One of the best. Chapman has the bucket go down and he draws a foul. He'll go to the line. That makes it a 21 point differential, 73 52, Memphis State. You know, you talk about this conference, and, and after talking today to uh, some of the people, Tim Stevens, the uh, you know sports information director for the conference, and Mike Slide, what I like about it is this though they have powerhouse basketball schools, it's not just the basketball conference. You know, they've got 13 championships here, which I think is really substantial. You know, when you think about a first year conference, that they've come here and wanted to make it a, a good uh, conference, both academically. Oh, excuse me, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> kind of interrupted the story there. <laughs> so as you were saying, and academically, but my goodness, Penny, rising to the occasion, please. Oh. That, that's worth a look, ladies and gentlemen. He just kind of decides a little early. He's going to dunk it. Long and <laughs> this is what you need looking at coming at me now. What are you going to do? Mm, I think I need to get out of the way. <laughs> 14 points for Hardaway and emphatically put those two down. Shears has had a nice couple of minutes for UAB. 
I think Shears and Haywood probably have given them the best minutes, in fact. Shears has been the most positive thing they've had happen to them in the second half. For Memphis State, 51, Todd. Seven-footer Todd Mata, Jr. out of Jackson, Tennessee, will replace Anthony Douglas, who gets a warm round of applause from the blue and white faithful that have made the trek northward here to Chicago. Did a good job defensively on Rodgers. Kept him out of the game. We might see some more dunks. Oh. Not quite, but we saw some athletic ability for this. Billy Smith had a good game, 15 points. Yeah, that'll go. The basket is good. Frank Haywood. 10 points tonight for Gene Bartos. Now Larry Finch will clear the bench and get a couple of other big game players in this one for the Tigers out of there and save them for tomorrow encounter with the ball. Smith comes out and Tony Madlock. Yeah, this is a good move right here because the game is, you know, you got a 19-point lead. It's not very likely that there's going to be any comeback. So Larry, get his guys on the bench, let him get a little break. And it actually is, is, is to, slightly to his advantage that he's playing the first game because his, his kids can go right home and rest. You know, I wanted to ask you about that, Quinn, because I know a lot of people ask Finch telling his team not to foul, and probably Very pretty good. Yeah, I'd say so, jumping up and down right in front of us. I know the Cincinnati team is here tonight. They've been sitting in the stands. They're going to stay for both games. Bob Huggins told us that. Joey Meyer, I think, having his team coming over for a game. Um, what do you do if you're uh, at this particular point in time, Memphis State tonight? Do you let your kids in a, in a tournament atmosphere go ahead and watch a game afterwards or get them right home? It, it kind of depends. With If you're playing, um, you know, you don't get to see who you're going to play here. So I'm not sure what the real value is to stay. Well, the most important thing you need now is some rest, uh, give the guys a chance to go back, lounge around, eat, kind of, you know, maybe give them something to think about before they go to sleep tonight. But I don't see what much reason for them to have to stay for this game. Mm -hmm. Basketball. Memphis State basketball, all but academic now with an 18-point lead and a minute 20 left to go, and UAB will just foul. Larry Finch, his team last went to the NCAA in the 88-89 season. The win tonight puts him at 19-9. Finch in his sixth year is... One more than Marcus double the amount that he State. has lost. Two shots. He thinks a lot of this young man right here, Marcus Nolan. Yeah, with, with good reason. You see, sitting on the bench there, just knowing they couldn't get it done. Rogers, Wilkerson, Jackson. This is a funny game. Some days you can get it going and some days you can't. And that's why the one thing you need to be able to do all the time is play defense. And as much as they wanted to play defense tonight, Hardaway makes it so difficult because it's hard to, to cheat on him because he'll make you pay. That's three. Hard along his second three-pointer of the night. Under a minute. Hardaway kicks it out. Gonna let some of the other guys get a chance. Hey! to the bucket and charges. So uh, he comes in there. Don't believe for a minute he's sitting on the ball. <laughs> that, that is not exactly a, a harder way <laughs> looking like in terms of the jumping ability. There's no chance to get this one. He had his mind made up. <laughs> Memphis State has fouled a couple of times, and again, it'll be Chris Haynes, a freshman from Memphis, here for the last minute or so. <laughs> How about that shot? <laughs> I, I was a little disappointed there. Chris Haynes is third. You know, even at this time of the game, what you'd like to see is coaches want to see everything that they've been trying to put in throughout the, the year or the season still implemented. Because you, you don't know if any of these guys are going to play, and, and if you. you you're in the game that you got control, they will, but if you, you don't want to have to worry about what kind of decisions they're going to make if you need them to play. Hardaway probably going to get a curtain call here in a moment. Smith set to check back in. Take away, Haywood. Missing no steps. Twelve points for Haywood. Sophomore has played a fine game for Gene Bartow. Lockdown 
now you see it at 15 seconds. And so Memphis State has won the first game in the official first great Midwest Conference tournament. As they'll knock off UAB in the quarterfinal round. And Hardaway will leave the game. You know, this is, this is a relationship, a player-coach relationship is, is a, an interesting one because when, when guys like Hardaway get here, Larry Finch becomes basically, in, for lack of a better term, like a surrogate father. So this relationship is one that, that you'll see nurtured. It becomes almost a love-hate relationship because at times they will totally be enamored with each other, but there are some other times they don't want to see each other. So what you see here is, is a, a lot of bonding, uh, of, of education, and just trying to help a young man mature not only as a basketball player but as a person learn him to, to get through times where you know you you've got this game one but to concentrate through it anyway you didn't have that kind of relationship with Bob Knight did you no coach and I are close whatever you say go three-pointer <laughs> ends the game no we're, we're close but he's always talked a great deal about you so our final score is two old friends and one time coach and student Gene Bartow to Larry Finch at Memphis State in the final four season of the 1970s. And this time again, Finch remains perfect against Bartow. 6 and 0 now, student against teacher. And our final score here tonight Memphis State 79, UAB 67. So Memphis State advances on to take on the top seed DePaul Blue Demons tomorrow night. And of course, in game two coming up here in a moment, it'll be Marquette against St. Lewis with the winner, a date set tomorrow for Cincinnati. So let's go upstairs now to our host, John Paul Della Camera. JP. Thank you, Tom. You know, everybody will tell you that it's Midwest.